May I recommend, if you're in the midst of grieving, that you read a little tiny book stuck towards the middle of your Bible called Ecclesiastes. And friends, that's a dark book to read. In my Bible, it's about 10 pages long. But that book gave me a perspective on reality that I needed desperately when I grieved. I bet I read that book 15 or 20 times. As I, when I was in that bumming attitude and coming into the better after state. Know that time can heal wounds, but scars always remain. And we learn from those scars. We remember through our scars. I call scars significant continuous awareness of remembering something. S-C-A-R-S. Significant continuous awareness of remembering someone. What's your star? Who's your star? Now, if you're grieving, that first part of the message was for you. And I, and I bring this to you just to know that you can't avoid it. You need to go through it. Now, if you're not grieving, I'd like to give you a little bit of application. Because at one point or another in your life, you're going you're gonna to rub shoulders with someone who is. So what can you do to help? What can you do to help when that moment of grief comes? Share and remember. If, if you can go and share memories of the person that that person has lost, do it. Write in the condolence card. Pictures are so precious. Video nowadays is so precious. If you've captured pictures or video of someone that someone has lost, give it to them. Remembering birthdays, but also remembering death days are very significant and can be very humbling. Don't just send flowers on for the funeral. If you want to help that person heal, mark that down on the calendar for next year and send flowers a year from them. It's a powerful thing. Remember birthdays. Sometimes people think, oh man, I don't know. Anything. It's so and so's birthday. Well, maybe the Lord is prompting you. Maybe you've remembered so that you can make a call and just say, hey, you know what? I know it's, I know it's their birthday. And I'm praying for you. That can be a great help. Speak with care. I actually had a pastor say these things in a sermon a while back. And I wrote them in the back of my Bible so that I would remember the right things to say when you're dealing with someone who's grieving. Say, I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry. Say, I cannot imagine what she must be going through right now. Say, I'll pray for you, and then do it. Say, I wish I could take the pain away. Say, I'll be in touch, and then actually be in touch <laughs> a week, a month, a year later. Now just real quick to cover some things that you absolutely should not say. You should not say, you know, I know exactly what you're going through. Man, my, my hamster died when I was six. <laughs> Don't do that. Even if, even, if, even if you had a very similar loss, your mother died, their mother died. You know, I know exactly what you were. Well, no, you don't. Because she wasn't your mother. Okay? That's one thing that you don't want to say. Um, even though this is true, even though this is true, don't say, you know, God's going to use this for good. God's going to use this for good. It's a true statement. It's a beautiful thing. It's a reality to grasp. But when a person is grieving, that's not really what they want to hear. Okay? And finally, the one thing that you should never say to a person who is grieving is, gosh, I can't believe you are not over it yet. It's been six months, man. Snap. Uh -oh. Don't do that. I haven't done an in-depth scientific study of grieving mothers, but grieving mothers 
take about a decade just to get back to zero most of the time. At least a decade. And that's just back to zero. That's just back to I'm not hurting every single hour of every single day. So try not to stay. No, better yet, don't stay. Don't say, I can't believe you're not over again. The best thing to do is simply this. One person that came through that I can actually remember fondly, and it was my seventh grade English teacher, Mrs. Bird. And she came through, and I saw her in the line. She was crying almost uncontrollably until she got up to the line. Then she started crying uncontrollably. And she said nothing to me. She just wept and hugged and made her way through the line. And she's a very uh, beautiful, very uh, put together lady in the classroom. But she was a complete mess. I don't call me hours. And it was the most healing thing I've ever seen. And afterwards, I, I was in contact with her and I said, Yeah, Mrs. Bird, that was so helpful. Came through the column and she said, You know, Todd, I buried three brothers myself. I have three older brothers that have all been killed in various circumstances and situations. I, I wanted to be there for you. Powerful stuff. Remember, John 11, 35, Jesus wept. Today, I don't know where you're at exactly. I don't know uh, what scars you may be carrying. But I know that Jesus wept then for Lazarus and he weeps today for you. Not only does he weep for us, but he weeps with us. And so I pray today that you would know his peace and you would know his hope and you would know that Jesus weeps with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are a God of life and a God of hope. But even in the midst of our grieving, you don't stand aside, you don't stand afar with a smug smile on your face, knowing that everything will indeed be okay in the long run, but you come down and you meet with us. And Lord, right now there are those here who are carrying heavy grief in their hearts. There are those here that have been carrying it for years. Lord, would you come beside them now? Would you wrap your arms around them? And would you give them your peace? But Lord, would you also prompt your people? Would you soften our hearts? Would you jar our memories and help us to remember those days and those people? And help us to have for peace and for healing. Lord, we thank you for the love you have shown us. Help us to show it to others.